everyone, and welcome back to episode 17 of my F1 2016 Force India career mode, where today we are here at the Japanese Grand Prix, a track that is a bit mediocre for me in personal opinion. It's not a track I particularly enjoy. If you guys have not checked out last episode, I would highly recommend doing so. It was an incredible, incredible race. But let's now move in to track climatization. As you can see here at the top, we were on a bit of a cheeky lap here, I won't lie. It wasn't the most consistent lap, but I don't think we could do much better than that. So we have decided to leave it just with the green there. We're only getting 30 um, R&D points there, which is a bit of a shame, but still, obviously, that's 30 more points than we would have had. Next, moving on to our qualifying pace lap, and we just didn't seem to have the pace that the team expected from us. It seemed to be all the way around the track we were absolutely fine, bar the final uh, sector, where the AI just seemed to have really, really good traction. It was a bit odd to experience, but still... Now moving on into qualifying, as you can see, qualifying was a very, very rainy affair today. Not even able to tackle 130R flat out, which is a bit of a shame, but still, um, obviously we do exactly what we did last weekend out at Malaysia, but we're going to run our first lap on lean revs, you know, just get into a rhythm, and then our second lap on rich, as you can see, at the end of our lean lap there, we were just over a second behind Lewis Hampton, so not too worried about that, as now we come into the final sector on our rich mix lap, as you can see, we are over a second up on our personal best there, so it's looking very, very strong. Coming through the final corner here, though, what time are we going to be able to post as the back end slides out slightly? We move second behind Lewis Hampton there, a very, very strong lap from ourselves. I was quite impressed with that. But as you can see, just fast forwarding now to the end of the session, the teams like Ferrari and Red Bull that just seem to have a lot better downforce really managed to pick up the momentum there. And they ended up hosting, and we ended up finishing sixth place overall there. Which wasn't too bad, I wasn't particularly disappointed with that. So now we have to obviously move in, try and move forward in the Japanese Grand Prix. So here we are then, ready for the Japanese Grand Prix, obviously. Hoping, after a couple of fairly decent starts over the last sort of three, four races, that we can do that again from a little bit lower than we're used to recently. We have, I think, the lowest grid position we've started... When I think we started 5th in Spa, then 4th at Monza, and then 2nd back at Malaysia. Which obviously were 3 very, very good qualifying positions there. So 6th, nothing too uh, nothing too special from ourselves there, which I was a bit of a, a bit disappointed by, I won't lie. But still, now obviously just having a look at the race strategy. A 2-stop is probably looking like a very, very strong option for us here. The 1-stop just was completely out of question there. As you can see, we were trying to have a look, see if it would have been possible. But we really, really don't think it will happen. And then, obviously, just bringing down the fuel a bit as well. Don't want to be trying to run too much fuel there. Couldn't actually exactly remember how many laps this race actually was before moving into it. But now, let's just go into our formation lap. Hopefully, the car is all right on the launch. And it seems to be a little bit of a bog down on the initial phase uh, launch up there. So we are just going to cycle through the gears a little bit more than we do usually. Just trying to make sure the car is completely warmed up. And then we're just going to skip the formation lap. And let's move in to the Japanese Grand Prix. One light, two lights, three lights, four lights, five lights, and away we go for the Japanese Grand Prix there. Charlie White is really not willing to wait very long there as the fifth light route goes as we move straight in between Sebastian Vettel and Lewis Hamilton there. We decided to back it into turn one because three wide into the first corner is definitely not something you want to be doing there. As Hamilton now is trying to look like he's going to move past Vettel, they're pretty much barging him off the track there. As we're then just going to back out of another move there, really need to stop needing to be so cautious through this first sector here, as we are still right behind Lewis Hamilton and Sebastian Vettel. Meanwhile, at the end of lap one, going through 130R there, Vettel and Hamilton really slow each other down, so we're just going to swoop right past Hamilton there, through 130R, then outbreak Vettel into the final chicane there. So we move up into P3 of the Grand Prix there, behind, I think, it's Max Verstappen and Kimi Räikkönen, as Kimi Räikkönen there goes purple as well. So very, very strong performance from him there. But Vettel now is coming back at us, coming down the front straight here. The slipstream really having a good effect there. We're going to back out into turn one there, as Vettel runs hugely, hugely wide there. We run wide through the second part of the corner there, as Vettel then tries to get back past us, coming into turn three here. There we are going to have the inside line, and he's just going to file in behind us there. So we still hold P3 of the Grand Prix. But meanwhile now, coming towards 130R once again, we dip a wheel in the gravel there. Vettel gives us a bit of a push there, gives us another push. So we go on the grass there. He's just going to move around our outside there. We're going to try and slot him behind him. So Hamilton can't gain an advantage from it as well. But coming through 130R there, Vettel gets right over the curb on the exit there. We're going to give him a push there and just throw it up the inside into the final chicane. Run very, very deep there. And he's just going to be able to run around our outside there. 
going down onto the front straight though, is he going to be able to hold it? He pretty much just pushes his way in front of us there. Not really sure what that weave was, we kind of took evasive action from that as well. Wondering if he was going to lose the back end or anything. But coming down the front straight here, not trying to opt to go into the slipstream, just making him think that we might go for a move into turn 1 there. Just giving him a little bit of push there, going through turn 1 and another one there, just for good measure. Really just trying to tell Vertel to get a hurry up or just give us back the position there. As we did seem to be very, very evenly paced here, just following through sector one here. Not going to be able to make a move work then, as we just give an almighty push through turns five there, I think it was. And next up, moving on to the Degnas there, we run hugely, hugely wide over the curb and just completely outbreak ourselves into the next corner. Hamilton there is just going to be able to sweep straight past us. We've got Daniel Ricciardo now for company. But moving on into the next corner there, Hamilton just completely catches us out there, breaking hugely wide. Hugely early, sorry there, and we're just going to crash into his side pod there. Run hugely wide over the gravel there, a huge chain for us. So that's pretty much meant that we're going to have to pit at this stage. And that has pretty much just thrown our strategy out the window. Luckily, we will be able to stretch the two stops still. But without front wing here, we're going to dip down P8 before we even come into the pit lane here. But next on moving into the pits, we nail the pit entrance there. I was quite actually worrying how good we got that first time round there. But let's move it into our box. Hopefully, this isn't going to be a too much of a bad stop there. Obviously, with the front wing change as well, what is the time going to be? The team seems to take an absolute eternity there. But it was a seven-second pit stop, though, so actually a very, very strong pit stop. As we can see now, looking on the mini-map, there seems to be no AI in close proximity of us. I think it was only Felipe Nazar that might even look to get past us. As we come out the pit lane, yes, he will. He's just going to run straight past us. Perez comes into the pits as well. But it seemed to be at this stage of the race, pretty much P1 to P7 were all nice and close together. And then P8, P9, P10 were all pretty much just by themselves, apart from Nazar and I. As I'm now looking to try and make a move on Felipe Nazar here. Going through 130R, obviously on the newer set of tyres. Look, round is outside. Are we able to kind of hold it? Yes, we are. And we just move straight past the Salvo. But as we can see now on lap 10, we're moving very much further forward in this Grand Prix. Very much a boring first half of this Grand Prix. Is now we're going to try and look round the outside of Gutierrez there. He's just going to try and squeeze us. Not really sure what he's thinking there. As he tries barging us pretty much behind him there. It's getting very, very violent very, very quickly as we go through 130R. Trying to hold it around the end, so make more contact with his side pod there. And just pretty much just going to throw it up his inside through the final part of the chicane. I think we've got the whole car in front of him. And no, we do not. So it's got far too hot there. And we've just gone straight into the side of him there. Which just meant we're both spun out. We've both lost a heck of a lot of time to the guys in front of us. But I really thought this stage of the Grand Prix, we weren't probably going to be able to jump the AI in front of us. As it was just such a, such a lonely Grand Prix. It was a bit of a shame for us. But as we've seen now, moving on to lap 15. Coming in for our second pit stop of the day. Really not too worried about where we're going to finish in this Grand Prix because it was pretty much eight was going to be our best performance here. Just skipping forward to the end of the pit lane though, obviously we're moving to P9 behind Gutierrez there. NASA's not going to be able to get past us, but as you can see now, moving on to lap 18, we, back, we are back up to P18. And the safety car has been deployed, and that could not have been much better for us as we wouldn't have seen any more action for the rest of this Grand Prix. And that means that we can come into the pits at the end of this lap, make another, uh, make another stop. And we hopefully will therefore be right up with the guys in front of us. I don't think they're going to make a stop. Because they don't think the soft tyres will be able to make it to the end. But as you can see, coming into the pit lane now, nailing the pit entrance once again then. Hopefully now we're going to move on to a set of the soft tyres here. Hoping that we do obviously get a very, very good pit stop. The AI probably will, I think we'll lose one place to Gutierrez at most there. That's just the AI behind us. Obviously can't go very quickly down the front straight there. Are we going to lose one place? Yes, we do to Gutierrez. So we're going to be out of the pits in P9 then. Which is still a very, very solid for this considering we are fresh, soft tyres there. So looking hopefully now, as the safety car will be coming in at the end of this lap, that we can make some positions, get ready to resume racing, as we try and hold it at the inside of Gutierrez, but he just manages to squeeze us out there once again, hopefully not going to make any more contact with him. But it is green, Kevin Magnussen dives straight into the pit lane there, just wanting to get out of everyone's way, he's pretty much given up with this Grand Prix if I'm not mistaken. As we've now got the slipstream on Esteban Gutierrez, looking up the inside into turn one, should be a very, very simple move for us. Yes, we do. As Verline is obviously the next car ahead of us. He's a lap down though, so don't get too excited that Verline could be in eighth place in. As it is Felipe Massa. Verline just gets out of the way very, very uh, carefully and quite intelligently there. So very, very happy that he got out of the way there. As we need to really try and pick up the pace, try and get close to Felipe Massa. As you can see, coming through the, uh, to the first sector here, Succeed just getting an absolutely beautiful run as we move towards the Degnas there. I haven't like overcorrect the back end there as it steps out slightly twice, in fact. So the car pretty much trying to kill us there. Coming through Degna 1, though, we get an absolutely beautiful run, just trying to throw it up the inside into Degna 2. Massa just goes very, very cautiously there and just gives up the position. As we can see now, at the end of lap 22, at the start lap 23, Daniel Ricciardo is out of this Grand Prix. As you can see on the right hand side there, his engine has just completely blown up. 
a huge, huge shame for Ricardo there. But as we can see, now moving on to the end of that 24, the pace that we pretty much have to the area in front of us has pretty much just dropped off. And that has meant that we're pretty much sick is going to be the best space we're going to be able to finish it. And that meant by lap 27, coming through Spoon Curve here, Felipe Massa is now really, really hassling us as we weren't able to get the momentum on the guys ahead of us. We probably stretched these set of soft tyres just one lap too far, which is a bit of a shame for ourselves there. But Felipe Massa now looking around the outside into 130R. Oh, he's just going to be able to get straight past us there. But now we're in the slipstream, obviously. And that's going to give us a very, very good run into the final chicane. Looking up his inside. Can we make the position stick? We get on the inside of him. He's pretty much just going to throw it up the curves. Barge us out of the way there for P6. Didn't really know it, was that mu it meant that much to him there. So we're going to come home in a very, very poor P7 there. Not really too happy with that. Obviously, we lost one position out from our grid position. But anyway, guys, if you have enjoyed this Grand Prix, don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button. I'm going to now leave you guys with the points. Hopefully, you guys have enjoyed it, and I will see you in the next one. Thank you for watching, and goodbye. First, I didn't think that I was cut enough to bleed. Then I saw my secrets getting swallowed by the sea. Now it's gold and it's all on you